All right, what's going on, guys? I hope y'all like that beat in the background. Who is that DJ and like that? Well, shout out to my cousin Ryan Wolf, DJ Ryan Wolf, the hottest DJ in the land. In today's podcast, man, MTC Exposed bringing you today. We're going to be talking about Decker. Decker Truck Lines. A young man decided to give me a call and he was like, yo, I want to talk about Decker Truck Lines, yo. And I was like, yo, let's do it. Now, considering the fact that me and this man been going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, you know, we finally, finally, is together to bring you guys the information about Decker truck lines uh let me see i gotta bring that up all right now let's see there we go uh decker truck lines they located where they located at bro where where they out of their headquarters is in fort dodge iowa in fort but they got terminals in a few places in fort but the headquarters is in fort you say fort dodge iowa Correct. All right. So Decker Truck Lines, man, they they look like they got like like Midwest, Western, Midwest flatbed and Southern flatbed. So they're they so they're a reefer and flatbed company, right? Right. Right. And I, I'd say it's probably I'm going to guess probably about 35 to 40 percent flatbed, and the rest is reefer and dry van. All right. So do they do they have any dry vans, or it's all their vans is reefer? They do have some dry vans. Oh, okay, okay. So what's so what's up, man? What 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 about? Are you still at Decker, or you uh you you? Uh, no, I, I'm not. I'm no longer at Decker, but I wanted to talk about them because they're a good company and you very, very seldom hear anything about them. Okay. And they're not a tiny mom and pop. They probably have, I'd say, in the range of nine to 1,100 trucks. Okay, okay. So let's uh, let's, let's, let's start at the beginning with this company, man. So how, how, long are, how long have you been with them before you left? I was with them um, about ten months. Oh, okay, so so the ten months that you was there, you 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 enjoyed your time there. Why why did you leave? Uh, I had a preventable accident that was pretty ugly, and they showed me the door. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, you you wanna what what was what was the accident? I was coming out of a shipper, and it was dark. Mm -hmm. The shipper was in a new location, so I had never been there before. So I'm coming out, and uh, you came out a different way than what you went in. Right. So just as I was coming out, I'm looking at my GPS, seeing which way I need to go. And the one time I didn't watch my trailer wheels, I hit a gate post. Unfortunately, the their automated gate opening system was on that gate post, and I tore it up pretty bad. Wow. Uh, yeah, and Decker and, was like, oh, no, we can't have that. Well, wait a minute. I mean, that was uh, – it could, it could be perceived as an honest mistake, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. okay. I mean, it was an honest mistake. I wasn't trying to hit it. Okay. So I mean, you already specified that it was it was dark. You you probably didn't. You, you well, of course you didn't see it because if you saw it, I'm sure you wouldn't. Uh, you wouldn't have tore it up. But they didn't. They they didn't. Uh, they 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 didn't give you. You know, like uh, uh, they say they didn't give you another chance. They just out the door, huh? Yeah. Uh, and I, I think it was probably because it was it was ugly. When I saw the pictures that I sent to safety, I was like, "Wow!" Oh, okay, you wow, okay. 
But still, that's what, you know, that's what insurance is for. I mean, you know, nobody, was anybody hurt? Nope. Oh, okay. Nobody, nobody wasn't hurt. Nobody got killed. It was just a property damage, pretty much. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So how, so what, they, they just routed you back to the terminal and, and you just have to wait for safety to come in in the morning or how, how did they? Yep. Oh, okay. So that's how yep, that was pretty much it. I was, and, and this place was probably only about, Oh, I'd say probably about 15 miles from one of their terminals. Oh, okay. And I had like 40 minutes left on my clock. So I was kind of trying to get there before my clock ran out. And I think that contributed to it. I was in too much of a hurry, okay. which is usually how most accidents happen. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. You know, when people is in, when people is in, uh, is in a hurry, you know, they, 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 they're not thinking. And you know I was just talking right. and you know I was just talking to one of my uh one of my trucker buddies last night and we was uh we was we was agreeing to disagree on how we see this trucking thing. She sees it as a hustle. I don't. I I don't see it as a hustle. You know what I'm saying? So I I, I guess if you hustle too hard things shit will happen. <laughs> right you know right, what i'm right. saying all right so and, and i think i would i would tend to agree with you i don't see it so much as a hustle but i can see how she would feel that way right i can see that side all right so uh unfortunately they 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 let it you go uh was was decker your first company that you that you went with or or uh pretty much yeah i, I had worked for a small mom and pop previous to that but i only worked there about maybe three months you know they had difficulty coming through with the pay and my thing was if you can't pay i can't stay i got you i got you that's the only reason why we're out here you know what i'm saying yep. <laughs> that's the only reason why we're out here you know if we're gonna sacrifice our lives you know for 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 this industry then we we need to get compensated for it that's the whole that's the exactly. whole kitten caboodle. You know what I'm saying? We need to get we need to get compensated for it. Even if we're gonna be out for like a week and be at home for the weekend, we're still out for the week. We're still sacrificing for the week. We still need to get uh we, we need to get compensated. All right, so yeah, absolutely. All right, so how did you find out about Decker? Where 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 did you uh where did you find find Decker and and how did the uh, on onboarding process went from uh, from talking to the recruiter all the way up until orient orientation. Well, I, I had been doing research because uh, I knew that I wasn't going to last at this small mom and pop, especially with them being slow with the pace. So I was doing research before I even left there. And uh, I had looked at a few companies, and out of all the companies I looked at, Decker seemed to be have the best offer. So I called up a recruiter and talked to her and ended up going with Decker. And I have to say, you know, everybody says recruiters lie. My recruiter for Decker told me everything exactly spot on. Okay. What she told me was exactly how it was when I got there and through my nine, 10 months there, it was exactly what she said. So I'd have to give big ups to that recruiter. She did not lie to me about anything at all. All right. So you, so you pretty much kept, kept in turn, kept in, kept in team with, with, with the key words that they were saying. So what right. on, on here, on there, on the job, on the job posting or on the application website, they says it's a two, uh, 2,500 sign on bonus. Uh, the Midwest reefer region, they pay at between 45 and 50 cent a mile. It includes a 10 cent per diem, 10 cent per mile per diem, meaning that, the starting wage is anywhere between 35 and 40 cent per mile 
with a 10 cent per diem. Um, Correct. Uh, average, well, I don't need to get into the average, but they say guaranteed minimum pay in selected areas. What do they mean by guaranteed minimum pay? What What do they mean by that? Well, uh, and I guess things have changed a little bit since I was there because when I started, I believe the uh, sign-on was, I think it was 1500 or maybe it was a little more. I can't remember. But uh, you get guaranteed weekly pay. And I've listened to your podcast before, and I, I know how you feel about guaranteed weekly pay. Mm-hmm. But uh, there's an upside and a downside to it. The upside is, and, and their stipulation, their only stipulation on that is you're available for dispatch Monday through Friday. Right. And you're home on weekend. Right. So as long as you are available for dispatch, my guaranteed pay was thirteen fifty a week gross. That's before taxes, insurance, and all of that good stuff. Okay. So you always knew you were going to get that minimum, regardless of how many miles you actually drove. Okay, okay. The downside of that is there's not a lot you can do to get more than that. Hmm. Unless you're one of those people who just drive, 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 never, never stop. Mm-hmm. Then maybe if you get over, I don't know how many miles it was, you could actually make more than the guaranteed minimum. But the good thing is you are guaranteed that minimum gross pay every week. Okay. What was what, if if that was the guarantee pay the 1350 then what was the average miles that that you was that that you can average to get more? Uh the way Decker worked it was that the people on guaranteed pay, they use those people to make the, I guess you would call them the short hops. Okay. And the long distance mileage, that was the people who were on the per mile pay. So I was averaging a low week would be 1,800 miles. A high week would be... 2200 miles okay 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 now now let me see if i get this straight see if i can still understand this because i really i i guess guarantee pay works when it works but you said that you gotta be available so let's say monday monday in the morning you available for dispatch Monday more. I mean, all day Monday, you didn't get a dispatch. You didn't get nothing. You sat. Uh, you didn't get. You you didn't get nothing. But Tuesday night at around two, at around one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, two o'clock or uh, you know Tuesday morning, they call you up for a dispatch. But you you know you've been up all day, you know you've been up all day Monday. And let's say you just laid it down maybe about midnight or maybe about eleven mm-hmm. o'clock or something like that. And then they call you two, they call you two, three hours later saying, yo, we got a dispatch for you. If you turn down that dispatch, do you negate that that guarantee pay? Well, you know, I, I don't know how it works with the drive-in and reefer division. Mm -hmm. But that instance never happened with me doing flatbed. Okay. So just say that I was out. Well, typically what would happen is Friday I would pick up a load Mm -hmm. and bring it home. Right. And have to deliver it Monday. Okay. Now, this is the way it always worked for me. And I guess this is Decker's thing. Because you're on guaranteed pay, they make sure they get some miles out of you. I have I have heard of people having to wait hours and hours and hours for dispatch for the next load. At Decker, 45 minutes was a long wait for your next load. 
usually when you send in your empty car, you almost immediately got the next dispatch. Okay. And this is and and you so, you you ran flatbed side. You you didn't run the Right, I was Right. Oh, okay. Um all right, so orientation uh I'm assuming that you, since you never did flatbed before, how long was orientation and, and securement training? Orientation was a week. It was Monday, started on Monday, you get your truck assigned on Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, securement training was two full days. So, you know, the first couple of days, just like orientation, any place, you go, you do your paperwork, your payroll all of that typical stuff. And then Wednesday and Thursday, you're out in the shed or on the yard doing flatbed securement, learning how to fold tarps, how to apply tarps, how to chain down loads, depending on what it is, coils, barrels, sheet steel, whatever it is. So they train you on all of that, which I thought was pretty good because actually I had done flatbed with the small mom and pop company, okay. but I had never had any quote formal training. Oh, okay. So it was good training. I learned some stuff and, uh, I say it was good. Did you have to go out? Did you have to go out with a trainer, uh, doing that, doing, doing those two days or doing that week or anything? Uh, no, that, it, it's all, no, it's all done right there on site. And they have trailers set up with, uh, different types of loads that are set up specifically for the training. All right. So that, that 13, you say 1350, right? 13, 1350, uh, guarantee. Yep. Is that, is that include, yep. is, does that include the tarping? Uh, no, you, you actually get, I think it was $15 tarping pay. So that was $15 off the rip, no matter how long it took you to tarp it. Correct. Oh, okay. Okay. Is there? And you, you also got uh, another, I think it was another $15 if the load was steel. Oh, okay. So just say you had a steel load that you had to tarp, that was an extra $30. How how often did you have to tarp, uh, tarp your load? I would say personally, maybe, I'm going to guess probably, you know, it's hard. I'm I'm trying to remember. It it was probably about 50% of the time because me personally, I did a lot, a lot of drywall Mm -hmm. or wall board. And those were usually pre tarp drop and hook loads. But you still got fifteen dollars to pull the tarp off. Oh, okay. Once you got to the delivery. Okay. Okay. Now, so, uh, now being that, like I said, like like you said, you know, you didn't have to go. You you didn't have that issue because a lot of the a lot of the dry uh not drive in. I'm sorry. A lot of the uh flatbedders, they they kind of like got solar hours. You you usually don't run at night. Right. You don't have no deliveries at night. Majority of your deliveries is during the day. Right. Right. We we pretty much work. I would say nine to five, but it was. Usually I would say it's more like 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. OK. Seldom, seldom do you have a pickup or delivery outside of those areas. Well, I take that back because uh, Home Depot stores, you have to do the delivery after they close which was usually 10 p.m. Oh, okay. But that's will probably be the only nighttime right there. But after that, y'all don't, y'all don't get nothing else. Y'all pretty much sleep and then wait till the next dispatch in the morning, right? Correct. Oh, okay. Now you say you were already, how, how would, how would the fleet managers there stack your, stack your loads? Do, do you know after you deliver the next load that you're going to pick up? Well, that was one of my complaints with Decker was uh, there wasn't a lot of pre in their pre-planning, meaning you didn't know what you were doing next so you were finished with what you were doing now. Okay. 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 And uh, that, that sometimes caused issues because uh, 
Just say that, and this happened to me once, I started about 7 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. And I went and I made my delivery, and then the next delivery, my appointment time was like 10 p.m. And I'm like, well, you know, that means that I'll be out of hours before I'm even supposed to make this delivery. And I ended up having to go to the receiver, sit there about three hours waiting for my clock to run out, and then use PC to get in position to be unloaded. Okay. Okay. So, but that 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 was probably the only issue with uh, their load planning. Sometimes you just didn't know what you were doing next until you were done with what you were doing now. Okay. Okay. So, would would Decker man? What what was the what was the what was the uh, lanes that you that you drove? What was you you drove all forty eight? You you was regional. What what were no, we? what were you? No, I, I I was Midwest. I was Midwest regional. So I did a lot of a lot of Wisconsin, all over the state of Wisconsin, all over the state of Minnesota. Those are the places I went the most. Although I did go to South Dakota, Nebraska, Michigan, Ohio. So those were all within the, their Midwest regional. But I guess just the way either my DM or however they do the load planning, it was like I would go to Minnesota three, four times a week. Next week I'm going to Michigan three, four times a week. <laughs> okay. Next week I'm going to Wisconsin three, four times a week. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that. Yeah, doing that Midwest, yeah, you you pretty much is gonna stay in like maybe about four or five states at a time. I mean, I, I'm doing Correct. you know, I do I I'm doing Midwest regional right now and you know, it's 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 uh Minnesota from Minnesota to Ohio, from Ohio to Minnesota. You know what I'm saying? I have yet to yeah. you know, I yeah. have yet to get up into Minnesota because I told them that I didn't wanna you know, I didn't want to travel up there because of the hostilities that's going on up there right now. But as right now, you know, I, I, I travel from Ohio to Illinois and then 400 miles from Illinois to my next load within that week. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. all right. So, yeah, and it was. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say it's very much like that. I, I would go from. I may pick up in Indiana and go across Illinois Mm -hmm. through the state of Wisconsin, just say as far north as Duluth, Minnesota, which is about as far north as you can go and still be in Minnesota. And uh, those were usually the types of runs I made. Okay. So you got a, so you got, did did you get paid weekly or bi-weekly? Uh, weekly direct deposit. Okay, so they got your direct deposit. So they didn't. Um, they didn't offer. Did, did do they did do they offer any type of uh, uh, advance if you need it? Yes, you you can always call and ask for a cash advance. Okay, which works the way they usually do. You get a cash advance that's coming out of your next pay. Okay. Now, being that you only been there for ten months, uh, was you able to? enroll into their benefit program and if so what are, what are the benefits do they offer well they have the typical benefits uh life insurance accidental death death dismemberment uh dental vision health insurance the health insurance at least in my opinion was kind of expensive it was through uh blue cross blue shield I thought it was kind of pricey, but uh, it wasn't like outrageously pricey. Was that for was that for a single or for a family? That that was for single. Well, it was still exp- expensive for uh for single. Wow. Yeah, well, it it just seemed expensive to me. Huh. I mean, I I don't remember exactly how much it was, but it wasn't like fifty dollars more than anybody else asked for it was probably i'd say i'm gonna say probably 10 to 20 dollars more than i would have thought it was reasonable 
But again, it's Blue Cross Blue Shield, so they really are the ones who control the race. Okay, okay. So what's up with uh? So coming into the uh, come coming into the company uh, during orientation, what was the um, what was what was the drug screening process? Was was it hair follicle or was it uh? Yeah, they they do both. Oh, they do urine and hair. Okay, so now I I don't know if I got the video. Let me see. Let me see if I let me see. Um I could have sworn that I had the video. Let me look in here. See if I got her video. Uh I don't think I got her video. Give me a second. Let me see. Uh, mm-hmm. Let me go here. I know it's on her Instagram. Is it on her Instagram? Let me see. Where is it? E. Do, 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 do. Oh, there we go. All right. Hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on. I think I found it. All right. Hold on. All right. So, for for people that don't know about the about the hair follicles let me let me mm-hmm. show you of course you won't be able to see it bro but let me show you guys especially if you're a female let me show you guys what y'all have to go through when y'all do a hair follicle test They got a handful of hair. Look at that. <laughs> uh, they don't. Well, at least they didn't take that much hair from me. Well, they they took a lot of hair from they took a lot of hair from shape. Look at that patch right there. <laughs> she actually got a patch. Look at that. Oh my god, that was they they took a patch, dude. They they took like a lot. Oh. They took like a lob of hair out of her head, man. <laughs> and so for you oh, so I, for you women out there that's uh for you women out there that that that's thinking about coming into this game and and they do hair follicle tests i suggest you not wear a weave <laughs> and just <laughs> and and just know how much hair they going to take out of your head <laughs> but as for yeah, as it, for it, you guy i mean as for you man where where how much how much did they take from you and where did they take it from? Well, because I'm bald and I was pretty much clean shaven, just had a mustache, mm-hmm. they took it off of my chest. Oh, okay. And and it wasn't like they shaved me clean. Mm-hmm. They just snip snip with some scissors and got a little bit of hair. Oh, okay, okay. So it wasn't really that bad for me. Oh, okay. So you said it wasn't so you said it wasn't that it wasn't that bad for you, but it was bad for shape. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah well, it was bad. It was maybe women. Yeah, it was it was when when when, when women go, they better have in their mind, oh, maybe I'm gonna be going with a short hairstyle for a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You de- definitely want you definitely wanna consider that. You you might wanna you might wanna know all about that before hand so all right so um so what about um well you you was only there for 10 months but can you elaborate on if they offer vacation and if so what did you get vacation during the duration that you was there or did you get or is it vacation after a year it's vacation after a year and i think it was one week after a year Two weeks after three years, and I believe three weeks after five or seven years, I can't exactly remember. All right. You don't get paid holidays. You may be off that day, but you won't get paid for that day. It's kind of like trucking, you know, you gotta be driving to make money. Now see that's that that so, kind of sucks. You you can get you can have that day off, but you they they, they won't offer a holiday. Would you consider 
Would you consider Decker a trucker's company? Hmm. That that's a kind of a difficult question because it doesn't seem like any company is a trucker's company. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, we're kind of like um, a necessary evil. It's kind of like having light bulbs in your house. You prefer not to pay for light bulbs, but you got to have them. <laughs> That's that. I think the analogy leans more towards insurance. We prefer not to pay it, but we gotta have it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. we prefer not to pay it, but we gotta have it. What's uh, yep. what what equipment do they offer? What what equipment do they offer there? Um, mostly they have late model Peterbilt five seventy nine. Mm-hmm. They have. Volvo, and um, here recently, just recently, I saw one of the newer Freightliners, which surprised me because they didn't have any Freightliners when I was. Okay, okay. So they got uh they got Freightliners, Volvos, and uh, Peterbilts. Are they are they manuals or are they automatics or are they all or they're, they're all automatic they're, fleet? They're, they're pretty much an all automatic fleet. Now you see, this is for the old schoolers, all right. And I I know you guys, y'all y'all hate on y'all y'all hate on the fact that a lot of these new drivers that's coming out here, they they can only drive automatics, but you can't hate on them because the companies are going automatic. Unless you get your own, right. unless you get your own truck, so I mean, you can yeah, exactly. You, you, so you, you can you can't you can't blame a person for driving what the company provides for, right? But you know, of course, and of course, the old schoolers, you know, they 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 set in their ways, man. They set in their ways. So, mm-hmm. and again, back to what I said earlier today. I mean, earlier about the hustle. How the hell can you hustle with 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 an e log? I I could probably see the hustle mentality with logs, with paper logs, because you can cook the books, sort of say. But you right. can't you right. you can't cook an e log. I mean, if you only got two hours to drive, and you got and you need three hours to get there. How the hell are you gonna hustle there? How the hell are you gonna hustle there if you only got two hours to drive? Right. So, I mean, yeah. Speaking of e logs, man, what was the computers that that they have in a that they have in the truck? Uh, they use Omnitrack. Qualcomm. Yeah, Qualcomm. Oh, okay, okay. Did they have uh what what did did they have any other amenities in the truck? Uh, refrigerator, in inverters. Uh, so, All right, thank you. So they get they about to put you in the. All right, sorry, I. Ha- yeah, they about to put you. No, no, uh, I. I yeah, I think they're 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 gonna move me in a few. Oh, okay, okay. But well, uh, we can we can let's see what what we can we can hurry up and no, wrap no, it. Oh, ahead. okay. Uh, what other what other amenities do they have, do they have in the trucks? Like refrigerators. Oh, that's that, that's where Decker stood out. They had APUs on the truck, inverters in the truck, refrigerator in the truck, and many, if not most, have. Epic View, Ep- <laughs> Epic View satellite TV. Oh, okay. And a nice thirty-two inch screen. Oh, they had all installed in the truck. Oh, they had all of that in the truck. Okay, okay. So, yep. so they was so comfort. They they made sure that you guys was comfortable on on the road. Absolutely. What about uh? What about driver cams? Yep, in and out facing camera. Oh, okay. Kind of, which is a kind of big sticker for a lot of people. 
But I came from driving a school bus, which had dozens of cameras in it, so it just didn't bother me. Oh, okay. All right. But a lot of people don't like that. Yeah, not not a fan. Not and, not a fan. All right, so before we get on up out of here, man, what, what would you consider the best part about working at Decker? Um, they kept you going, and I guess it's because they – they're paying. They're giving you guaranteed pay, mm-hmm. so they keep you running. Now they say they don't have force dispatch, but Decker's view is you're a company driver. You pretty much go where we tell you to go, you know. And you can talk to your driver manager about where you don't like to go or loads you don't like to carry, and they'll try to work with you to uh, keep you happy in that respect. Like I told my driver manager, I hated carrying those uh, foam insulation loads. And after I had done one, I told him I didn't want to do that anymore, and I never got another one. Mm-hmm. So they they try to work with you. I mean, but you don't get to say, you know, you receive a dispatch to such and such a place and you get to say, no, I don't want to do that. Give me another one. As a company driver, you pretty much go where they tell you to go. Oh, okay. So, so. But they do not call that force dispatch. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay. That part. (laughs) So if, if, uh, if I don't want to go up in the, in the Northeast, but they say they give me a load that's going up in the Northeast, I pretty much can't turn it down because of number one, that guarantee right. pay, I, I will lose out on that guarantee pay as well if I turn it down. Right. Yep. That shit. That's pretty much the way it works. That shit crazy. All right. What will probably be the most stressful? But, oh, would you? Oh, would, what you was about to say? Oh, I was gonna say, but like I said, you can, you work with your driver manager and just tell them that. How how is it working? How 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 is uh how's the culture there? I mean, working with your driver manager. It, <clears throat> at least my driver manager was pretty good. I mean, we got along. We never had an argument. Um, like I said, I told him lows I didn't like. He didn't give them to me. There was no particular place I told him I never wanted to go, so that was a non-issue. But uh, we got along, and I say the people at Decker, it has a very good culture. Okay. A very good culture. Okay. Did you, uh, other than securing the the flatbed, have or other than flatbed, did you did you was you ever asked to drive uh, a drive-in or a reefer at one point, or no? It was just straight flatbed. At, at, at one point, I, I had one load where. They wanted me to go and drop a trailer and pick up a dry van. Mm -hmm. And I just said, so you want me to drop a flatbed at this Perina place and pick up a dry van? They're like, oh, yeah, well, no, we don't want to leave a flatbed there. Oh, okay. So that that was pretty much the end of that. So they, after that, it was always just strictly flatbed. What was the the most stressful part of, of working there? Other than the accident. The most stressful part <laughs> was uh, they, they had this one customer that they got cheat steel. And you had to make sure that the cheat steel didn't get any rust. So you had to actually wrap the load in plastic before you put a tarp on it. Mm-hmm. Well, the shipper would make you do that outside. So, of course, when it's windy, it's going to be kind of difficult to wrap the load in some plastic. Right. So that was always stressful. That always took two or three hours to get that load secured and tarped. And you might be doing it in the hot, hot sun, or you might be doing it in the rain, or you might be doing it, you know, in the wintertime. That that was probably, and this is probably true for most flatbedders, the weather is probably your biggest concern because I had to load up in Fargo, North Dakota, 
a, a delivery in Fargo, North Dakota. Where it's cold. And yeah, and it was winter time. And when I got there, the temperature was like 17 below zero. Damn it, man. That's not the wind chill. That was the actual temperature. And it was snowing. Mm. So <laughs> you can imagine trying to fold some tarps that are frozen. Hey, do you know if they you do you know if they hire felons? Um, I think that's on a case by case basis and how far back in the past it was. Uh when I was there, when I started, they were taking people straight out of school. But subsequently I've heard that you gotta have six months uh, what is it? It's either six months of driving experience in three months of flatbed or it might be nine and three or nine and six you, you have to have like least, you have to have at least a little bit of flatbed experience to come up in there well you got to have at least a little bit of uh driving experience i talked to one guy he wanted to do flatbed but they said he had to do dry van for, I believe, six months before they could put him on flatbed. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. So you said as far as home time goes, you, you went home every week. So what they do is they set you up with a, um, they set you up with a load on Friday, and then mm-hmm. you 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 go home. You make it home what Saturday? Where 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 do you stay? What what state you stayed in? That they was able to do that. Oh, I, I'm I'm in Illinois. I live right outside Chicago. Oh, okay, okay. So get you. So usually, and, and this was one of the good things about Decker. Usually, I would say by at least Wednesday, they are thinking about taking getting you home. Oh, okay. And they start working toward that. So you would be. I would say there was probably once, twice that I actually ran out of hours before I could make it home on Friday. Okay. Okay. But I usually got home Friday afternoon mm. to Friday evening. And sometimes I would have to leave out on Sunday afternoon to make it to the delivery on Monday morning. Oh, but there so was also you, one. So, had a so you don't get a so you, Monday, you don't get a full true two days off. Well, well this is what I was going to say. Okay. It depends. Like usually you would get your thirty four, mm-hmm. but I also had a load that delivered maybe about six miles from my house, so I didn't have to be there until like ten a.m. Monday. Okay. So I was off from Friday evening, all day Saturday, all day Sunday, sleep late on Monday, <laughs> get up at 8 o'clock and, and get it there at 10. Drive, you know, six, eight miles and make the delivery. Okay. Okay. Okay, man. All right. Well, Decker. All right. Oops. Wrong button. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can, I can. Decker I can, is certainly can, a place can, that. Uh, uh, Decker is a place that if you want to do flatbed, and, and uh, let's be honest, it is a starter company. But if you want to do flatbed, Decker is a good place. All right. So you would, uh, you, 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 you would, you, you would refer, you, you would refer Decker. And what? You, you, yes, I would refer. Did Decker. you? And speaking of referrals, they have a good driver referral program. You get paid for everybody that you refer that signs up. And you can make some pretty good money doing referrals. Okay, okay. So did you uh did you you say you mentioned that you got a that you got a fifteen hundred dollar sign on bonus. How how was that paid out? I mean, you was only there for like ten months. So out of the ten months, how much of that fifteen uh fifteen hundred that you that you received? I think I think I got about half of it. Oh, okay, okay. So how how was it paid out? Like you get, I can't remember exactly how they paid it out, but uh, you get four hundred dollars for completing orientation. Mm-hmm. You get another piece 
on your first paycheck after you've been working. Okay. And the rest of it is paid out, but it's pretty much paid out within the first year. Okay. Okay. All right. And, and well, there was something else I wanted to say about that. I can't remember it right now. <laughs> but they, like I said, they're, they're a good company for starting out with. And you don't hear a lot about them. Okay. Well, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Who, who is that? Well, that is it, y'all. Decker. If y'all interested in uh, coming in on Decker, Y'all could definitely check them out on their website, Decker.com. Right now, they have a $2,500 sign-on bonus. Uh, you can give them a call at 877-834-0304. And uh, they got four options to choose from, Midwest Reefer, Restroom Reefer. And if you're going in for flatbed, they got Midwest Flatbed. Southern flatbed. If you going in for reefer, it's 45 to 50, 43 to 50. And if you're going in for flatbed, it's 47, uh, 47 to 54, 47 to 54. And it all includes a 10 cent per DM for the, uh, for coming in. All right, man. I want. I appreciate you coming in, man, and uh, and uh, talk about Decker. Uh, you have any other advice for people that's that's interested in coming into Decker? Um, ask a lot of questions of the recruiters. The recruiter, at least the recruiter I had, will give it to you straight. <laughs> oh, that was the other thing I wanted to mention. Mm -hmm. Unlike a lot of these starter companies. Decker's trucks are governed at 65 by foot and 68 on crew. Okay. How long? Which is high compared to a lot. How, of, how long was, how long would the cruise last? Would it last throughout the, until you, until you put your foot back on the pedal or because sometimes they say cruise yeah. only lasts for like, you know, a couple of miles or a couple of minutes or whatever like that. Oh, no, no. It, it, it lasts until you either hit the brakes or you actually turn it off. All right. All right. All right. Oh, oh, then that was the thing I wanted to mention. Okay. As far as the inward facing camera, uh -huh. Uh -huh. the camera would turn off after you turn the truck off. And it's probably about. 30 to 40 minutes, the camera would automatically turn off. But they actually gave you a code that you could turn the camera off the minute you turn the truck off. But if you start the truck again, the camera comes come back, back on. on again. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Well, Decker, right. well, hey, if anybody out there interested in uh, Decker, definitely, like I said, give them a call. Uh, if you like what this young man say, you know, leave your comments in the comments below. Let me know how you like about, you know, what you think about Decker and everything. If it's something that's, if it's a company that you're interested in, definitely give them a call, man. Let them know. Let them know. All right, y'all. Well, I appreciate everybody watching. I appreciate everybody listening and all like that. I appreciate my special guests coming on the uh, MT, MTC Exposed series, you know, and he's coming in to talk about uh, Decker. Uh, Decker Truck Line, Decker Truck Lines. If you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Hit that bell and that all button for more. And on that note, me and uh, my special guest, Tom Smith, we are out of here. Who, who is that DJ like that? Who